Okay, wow, you guys have been amazing. In just 24 hours after posting that uh, YouTube video, responding to Dr. Ian Paul on meat, wow, you guys left a ton of comments. So uh, I wanna respond to three of the most popular that I see popping up, both on my Facebook page and that of Dr. Ian Paul. Thank you again for engaging, and thank you to Dr. Paul for getting this conversation started. Uh, first of all, some people, after having watched uh, the last YouTube video, which if you haven't seen, please see it, is people are saying, so all you're saying basically is the Bible doesn't specifically forbid uh, eating meat. That's not really saying the same that we should. No, 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 you weren't paying attention. It's, we're not saying that the Bible doesn't forbid it. We're saying the Bible goes out of its way to actively celebrate and commend animal products. It's saying animal products are seen as a blessing and God goes out of his way to provide them at times when he could have provided something else like salads. Like he goes out of his way to give animal products. Uh, that is the point that we are making. No one would pick up the Bible read and read it front to cover and think that the, the God described in that book was somehow contrary or opposed to the use of animal products. It's, uh, you, you might think he's contrary to vegetables because he doesn't say much good about vegetables, uh, but he definitely goes out of his way to say wonderful things about animal products, which makes Christianity unique among the world religions in many ways where there's so many food taboos uh, in a way that there just is not in Christianity. It is, there's just great freedom uh, in our faith. Uh, secondly, a lot of people are saying, uh, kind of, there's this sort of reluctant Christian vegan, okay, well, the Bible doesn't specifically forbid uh, the use of animal products, but it, it's only on special occasions, and it's only communal. Really? I noticed no one actually cited any chapters or verses when they said those things. Uh, actually, it's, the, the Bible seems to indicate Quite the contrary. The only times when uh, animal products were scarce was in times of poverty or w when somebody didn't have much money and couldn't afford that as part of their diet. I think, it, is it Proverbs 15? I believe so. Where it says, it's better to have love in the house and only vegetables than to have a house filled with meat and, and to have strife. The indication uh, would seem to be that uh, what the guy is saying, it's, it's better to have love and be broke and not even to be able to afford something normal like meat or animal products, and then uh, then have strife and to have you know a, a nice regular full refrigerator. Uh, that seems to be the point. Obviously, I've paraphrased. Look in, uh, l please look it up. Uh, but look at the references to when meat is employed. It's not just for special occasions. When Elijah is alone in the wilderness, God brings him meat and bread in the morning meat and bread in the evening. Note two things. He has meat twice a day, not just occasionally, and there's nothing communal about it. He's just by himself. God could have sent him a salad, but God loves him, and he knows that meat is good for him. God, uh, go, when Sisera is fleeing uh, for his life, he goes into Jael's tent. He's tired and wants to take a nap. What does he take to drink right before he goes to sleep? Milk. Nothing particularly uh, outrageous about that, well, people say, well, they killed the fattened calf when the prodigal returned. Surely that must mean meat is for special occasions. No, it means some types of meat are for special occasions. Just like here in America or in Britain, you will have special types of meat for special occasions. Americans will have a giant turkey for Thanksgiving. Uh, or here in Europe, they'll have duck or geese uh, for Christmas dinner something along these lines. It doesn't mean we don't have mints and burgers uh, on a regular diet. Uh, read the New Testament. They're eating fish on a pretty regular occasion. I mean, the disciples were fishermen. When Jesus rises from the dead, uh, we only have re record, re records of him eating animal products, twice fish and once honey. Two fish, one honey. No record of any fruits or vegetables. I'm not saying he didn't or he couldn't or he shouldn't, uh, just that we see this as a normal part of eating. Milk. When David goes to his brothers, he's bringing them cheese for their lunches. It's not, Chris, it's not, it's not just for Passover. Look at all the references. It's not just for a communal thing. It's, it's for people's daily lunches. You can find so many references. In fact, it's almost the opposite. And then you get in the New Testament, I believe it's 1 Corinthians uh, 8, 9, and 10. Yeah. In Romans 4, 14 or 15. Well, when it's talking about this, it's talking about buying meat, especially in 1 Corinthians, I believe, uh, eating meat in the market, right? 
He, you know, Paul says, go into the meat market and eat what you want, buy what you want, go get you what you want for dinner. It's fine. Uh, it says, but, but be careful. Don't offend people's conscience because, you know, the, the weaker brethren who are coming from pagan backgrounds, some of them struggle because of associations with meat and maybe they're only eating vegetables. So, you know, these are the vegetable eating weaker brethren. You got to be careful of those. So, so, so be kind of careful when they're looking on. The, the, the implication seems to be, and I don't mean to put, you know, I, I'm not going to take his argument farther than it is, but it almost seems to imply, not he doesn't quite say it, but he almost seems to hint at that it's, it's better to eat vegetables in public so you don't offend anyone and then eat all your meat at home in private. And because that way the, the weaker brethren uh, coming out of legalistic backgrounds uh, won't see it and get offended. It almost, but not quite, seems to indicate the opposite of what some of these people are saying. Well, it's only communal, which, by the way, is, is, is very disingenuous. Those of you who are saying meat was only communal, that's so disingenuous. Because in both Testaments, eating, <laughs> eating itself was more communal. Eating all food is communal. We are Christians. What is our communal meal? It's not a steak. It's the breaking of what? Bread. It's the breaking of bread. The, the most communal meal in the Bible. It doesn't have meat in it. It's as alcohol, as wine, and it has bread. You get together and break bread to show you, you're of one body. That is our meal. Uh, sure, they had nice meat. They also had it in private. Sure, they ate bread in public. They also ate bread in private. The idea that people only, the people who only rarely ate animal products, and it was very rare and it was only communal, has absolutely zero support from Scripture. The only time people for that they would forego animal products was in times of great poverty. It would have seen as a curse and not as a blessing. We are Christians. Jesus has declared all foods to be clean, and he celebrates animal products, the dairy, the, the fat, the, because he knows these are good for us, because our body flourishes and does well when we eat these things. And that is why he, when, he, when we have it in abundance, we take it and we give thanks to God for these things, along with fruit and other things. Um, that is our point. And uh, we leave it there. Happy to hear more responses from you.